Technique produces, feel reproduces, and that's the one in a game when you're under pressure, you know, to go to feel is the most important thing because you don't become clunky. You don't slow down in your thought process. If you can't keep them healthy, you can't keep them on the park. Um, if I can't keep them healthy, you can't coach them. If, if they can't bowl more balls in practice, they can't get better. Last thing you want is to leave something for three or four months. A really bad habit creeps in and all of a sudden, you know, all the hard work that they've done has just gone out of the window. So it's, it's constant monitoring, it's constant improvement and it's constant work on making yourself better. So Kevin, you, um, you made use of the Vicon facilities at, at Loughborough this week. Um, what can they do to, to help you and to help the bowlers at the club? Well, put simply, we're looking at, first of all, um, performance and health. So we're trying to keep them fitter um, so that we can do more work with them. Um, and then we're looking at those performance edges. You know, we know what they need to be able to do in county cricket and international cricket in the future to be able to take wickets. So that, that's the whole point of it. It stemmed from a long time ago when Professor Mark King at Loughborough actually started to really prick my interest with you know, using science can really um, help those two areas that you're looking for, but also it can predict success of the future. What kind of data can you get out of it? Well, it's objective, which you know, many times coaching has been a, a, a little bit um, finger in the wind um, because no one's really tried to measure. And if you can measure things, then you can hopefully improve them. And what we have got is an awful lot of data from the best bowlers that have come through England, effectively from, if you think, Flintoff, Harmison, um, Anderson, Hoggard, and then forward. We've got every international fast bowler and the best county bowlers. So you've got a really, really good um, range of bowlers to be able to see, well, would things that have worked for them work for some of our bowlers? Sometimes it doesn't always happen. You might have to try and fit it in their sweet spot, but it's good to have some really, really good information to go back on. How, how receptive are the players to it as well? I suppose that the sort of names you've reeled off might sort of help to convince people, but are people immediately receptive to, to taking in the stuff they see? Yeah, I, I think... In general, Knott's, Knott's bowlers are always brilliant, so they were lucky enough, and, and Brett would be a great example of that, to have Mike Hendrick um, coach him. You know, and Mike was a brilliant, brilliant coach, way ahead of his time, you know, did get involved in science, understood it as well. I, I had many conversations with Mike about it, but really good um, you know, traditional values about fast bowling. So Brett immediately, he got it. And he was talking to the biomechanists, we were looking at the technique, we were looking at the objective measures of his action, and, and he's now got some ideas to take it forward, which means I've got to now brush up really, really hard on what I'm doing. Um, but all of the guys, and we had the spinners in there as well, were asking questions and really interested about what they're going to get out of this. It's interesting you, you mentioned, Brett, as well, that it's not just maybe about the players at the start of their career. Can you learn things about bowlers who've been, been bowling hundreds of overs for, for years as well in professional cricket? Yeah, and that, and that, was, that was a really, really um, pleasant thing about the Vicon we did this week in that Brett straight away came over. You know, he's got an amazing career behind him already and, and all he wants to do is improve. So you had James Hayes at one end of the spectrum and Sammy, Sammy King. And then you had obviously Brett at the other end and they were all very, very curious. Brett was slightly different in that obviously he knows what he's done so far has got him to where he is, but he's actually thinking, what's my next 10 years going to look like and how can I keep getting better? Not only is that great for Brett, but that's great for Knott's cricket. And is it stuff that you can, you can come back to in season as well? Will, will the footage you've got this week have a life beyond this winter? Yeah, so it's a benchmark. It's the first time that we've got all of the Knots bowlers together. Interestingly enough, we've actually got some on Brett from when he was an 18-year-old, when he was with the 19s. When I was in my original role, I put Vicon in place for all of the age groups. So we've got some information on him which we'll look at and compare. Um, but if you can set a benchmark, it means you can then measure that and then look to improve it. And obviously with a link with Loughborough that we've got, and as I said, Professor Mark King is, is great at, at making sure that we've got the facilities and the specialists available. Peter Allway, who was there today, Dr. Peter Allway, did some, um, uh, some fantastic research on, on lower back injuries, and it's, it's way ahead of where it was before. So we've been able to also screen our younger bowlers for that, um, and we'll continue to screen them so we can hopefully make sure that we get rid of risks. 
Uh, it's not about cloning, got to be really clear on that. It's not about making everybody look like someone else. It's about getting into their sweet spot and trying to um, lower their risk of injury. You're never going to get rid of it. Fast bowling is brutal, but as long as you're aware and you're trying to move towards helping them stay healthy so they can get better, then I think going to places like Loughborough, talking to these amazing specialists, engaging your players, is going to improve the education they have. So it is that, that double kind of benefit, I suppose, is it, of, of injury, risk and of performance as well? Well, we talk about that here um, all the time. If you can't keep them healthy, you can't keep them on the park. Um, if I can't keep them healthy, you can't coach them. If, if they can't bowl more balls in practice, they can't get better. So unless you get that sequence right, or at least they're both very, very closely linked. For example, bowlers can get into bad habits. And one thing that I'm very, very big on is as I look at the footage that Cooney, the analyst, gets in every single game, and I just mark it off against their technical best in every game, it probably means I'm not going to say anything to the bowler. But if anything does creep in, I've got no problem going in and saying, right, have a little look at this. Let's go and do a session, even at the start of a game, the morning of a game. The bowlers are very, very happy to do that because we've tried to work in that way all the way through. Last thing you want is to leave something for three or four months. A really bad habit creeps in and all of a sudden, you know, all the hard work that they've done has just gone out of the window. So it's, it's constant monitoring, it's constant improvement and it's constant work on making yourself better. And how do you how do you blend that in with with sort of maybe the more old fashioned things like a bowler saying something feels right or maybe you see something that that you think looks right? How does that factor in with with the kind of data you may well, see? Feels the most important thing. So if you, there's two things that I try to think of. So technique produces, feel reproduces, and that's the one in a game when you're under pressure. You know, to go to feel is the most important thing because you don't become clunky, you don't slow down in your thought process. So we always try to mix between explicit technique, implicit coaching, and then feel. You get the blend, and then hopefully, when they're out in the middle, if they can perform. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. You can make a coaching session look great. Um, you know, everybody feels, feels really good about what they've done, but it's not under pressure. So you've got to test it, and you've got to make sure that holds up under pressure. So when we go to Loughborough, we look at them in their, their rawest form. So I, I had no input. I was sat there just logging a few things, how they felt, you know, one to ten, so that we were able to get the right ball. So, for example, if they were bowling a stop ball, we'd take their lowest mark that they gave us and their highest mark, and we'll see what the difference is between the two. And with the, you know, the level of analysis, which is the best you'll get in the world, we're then able to have that, um, that gap and make sure that we've got their optimal place to be, whether it's in a game or training.